Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is this is Magic Brad on the Magic Brad Show here in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the World Nerve Center headquarters of the Magic Lounge in an undisclosed location. And I've got a new friend just down south in the Texas area. His name is Austin Moody. Are you there, Austin? Hi, how you doing, Brad? <laughs> I thought when you said you're from Texas and I saw your name right away. He's got to be in Austin. I got a niece that lives in Austin. So. Uh, that, would only, that could only be too perfect, you know? <laughs> yes, and you said you live in Denison. I do. That's why I thought maybe your name might be Dennis, but enough. <laughs> I'll change magic, it for the sake of the show. Magic human. <laughs> <laughs> so this is very cool. I just started this show up. We're trying to get some momentum with it. And the, the idea is to kind of get some more exposure for magic without exposing magic tricks. Um, that's... That's one of my pet peeves. We can talk a little bit about that if you want, because different people have different opinions on it, but I've got mm -hmm. mine. And so how long have you been uh, doing the magic thing? I've been doing tricks here and there since I was a kid. I've gotten more serious about actually being a stage magician in the last uh, maybe two or three years. Mm -hmm. uh, I've met a mentor since then who's really helped me along. So things are actually doing really well right now. It helps to have someone that can uh, you know, give you a couple shortcuts and stuff. And oh yeah, it like a month after meeting him, I skyrocketed from where I already was. Yep, they can kind of say, you know what, your shoulder's stiff. I can, I can see there's something going on there. Lighten up a little bit. You know, yeah, like Lou, Lou, don't keep your arm at a 45 if you have something to sleep, you know? <laughs> exactly. Well, uh, the way I do this show, it's more just about the, the art of magic. I think it's fascinating that magic, kind of like music, it's global. And mm -hmm. magic, unlike music, you can do anything with magic. David Copper made, Copperfield made it uh, possible to make the Statue of Liberty disappear. People making airplanes disappear, walking through the Great Wall of China. You can do anything with magic. I think that's kind of a fascinating kind of thing that you can, you can do anything. I suppose you run into that sometimes. Someone says, uh, hey, can you make my wife disappear? No. <laughs> <laughs> that's the most common request I get. Exactly. But you, you must get asked to do things now and then, right? Yeah, uh, like shows or just random just things. Random. Could you hey, show me a trick? Oh, yeah, all the time. Uh, the, my favorite part is uh, people, I do a ring and ribbon trick. That's usually my go-to when I'm out and about because it's just an easy trick to keep in my pocket. Uh, and people hand me their wedding ring or whatever and think I can't do it with that, and I right. just immediately do it. Because <laughs> yeah, they kinda, think it's a trick ring, but it's absolutely not. It's another thing interesting about magic because if, if you're a musician – and you don't have your guitar or your drums or your saxophone with you, people don't ask you to do music. Mm -hmm. They assume that a magician can, oh, here's a coffee cup, do something with it. So then you it's do kind of a weird it. profession, you know, you don't uh, meet a dentist and say, hey, could you uh, do a root canal on me? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so right magic, here magic is a little bit different. Oh, by the way, I wanted to show you this little thing too. This is the Magic Brad show. It's one of these little me, me I want to give myself a little plug. And if anybody sees this on YouTube, I wanted to say, you know, subscribe to the YouTube channel and ring that little bell. So this is something we're trying to get out there as far as get some more exposure for magicians. Are, are you doing some, some gigs now and then? Uh, I've been, uh, lately, all my shows have pretty much been here in Denison, just because, you know, of the state of the world. Yeah. Uh, I've been performing at the Rialto, which is a theater down here on Main Street. It's about 100 years old. It's historic and really oh. nice looking. Very cool. Um, I've been doing some shows for the for the uh, sidewalk sales for the Main Street stores. They'll have me out front of their store and pay me however much an hour to perfect, basically perfect. bring in a crowd. See, that's another thing that's fascinating. I once worked at the Minnesota State Fair, and I worked in the line of the French French fry booth, the fresh French fry booth, because it was mm -hmm. too long. They didn't want people going, oh, I should just go <laughs> get a pronto pup. They wanted to keep them in the line, so they hired us, a juggler, a ventriloquist, to work the line and keep people in the line. So there's, there's a lot of cool things that magic can do that's different. You know, you, you maybe can't do that so much with other arts. Oh yeah, I think magic can probably go into any form of uh, business. I will, I will give you that. I even uh, proposed to a guy's uh, um, fiance once. Seriously. <laughs> How do you feel about that? <laughs> well, he, uh, he hired me to do it. <laughs> Cause it, the situation was we know who they were and stuff and um, he was out of town and wasn't able to do it when he wanted to do it. Little mm -hmm. glitch and stuff for work and stuff. So 
his fiance and her mother went to a restaurant and my job was to pose as a restaurant magician walking from table to table. And what I did was a thing with some flash paper and I produced the, the engagement ring for the wedding ring. Yeah. But at first she goes, oh, wow, cool. And then all of a sudden it hit her that this guy set this thing up and she started crying and it got real emotional. It was pretty cool. I bet that felt good. I, that'd be really cool. I've never done anything like that. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I started doing magic when I was like five, six years old as a little kid. And and, and I, I graduated high school in 1975 and did get a job because that's what you're supposed to do. And I got laid off and I thought, where's my gold watch? So I decided to be full time. So I've been doing it full time, 70s, 80s and 90s. And I'm semi-retired now. So personally, I've done a lot of weird stuff. I, I did another gig once. I My job was to embarrass uh, this woman's sister because they had this running gag of doing some practical joke to them. So I had yeah. to trick her at the airport. <laughs> she was picking up her luggage and I grabbed the bag. And uh, so I had uh, secretly had some uh, a bra and panties in my hands. <laughs> I reached in the suitcase, she was going, that's my bag. I go, no, this is my bag. Are these yours? These are mine. <laughs> and she was bamboozled because she knew that was her bag. And she's wondering, how did those those panties getting her back. <laughs> so, I, that would raise a lot of questions very quickly. Exactly. So magic is a lot of fun being in a lot of different situations. And I think a lot of people really appreciate magic unless they've been wounded by it, by a, a performer that made them feel stupid mm -hmm. instead of being amazed. Cause that can happen too. Where you humiliate someone. Oh yeah. Like, so, so my, my, kind of stage act. Yes, I'll, I'll make jokes at the expense of people, but never anything that I know is going to offend anyone. And There's with a fine line time, between humor and offensive, you know? Yeah, with some time, you, under, you understand who you can do that kind of thing with and, get, and it'll be okay. Nowadays, it's even harder, though, with the whole political correctness thing. It's, uh, oh, yeah. It's, you just got to be careful and, and then you got to be real careful with any kind of material that's a little bit on the, sh the dark side or the blue side. Oh yeah. Especially if you're doing corporate events and things like that. And uh, that's where the experience comes in. When, uh, when someone's hiring someone, is he dependable? He's got to be good. He's got to be dependable. And he's got to have some experience and not know to do something stupid in front of the CEO's wife, you know? Oh yeah. You don't want to, you don't want to do that. What kind of stuff do you enjoy doing? Do you like doing the stand up comedy uh, parlor size stuff or you like doing the bigger stages? And I like doing the bigger stages is, is my whole niche. Uh, in fact, my mentor is Jay Scott Berry. Uh, Hello, Jay. Right? Everyone knows Jay. <laughs> so we, we meet up once a week on, on Zoom, just like this. And uh, everything he's teaching me is basically stage magic. With the occasional close-up piece so I can you know, do roving magic and stuff. But the goal is to become a full-time stage magician in the next two or three years. I think you can do that. I don't even know if it takes that long. I mean, uh, to tell that's you a very generous estimate. I'm, I'm assuming it could probably be done in about a year or so, depending on how things go with everything going on right now, you know, in the world. Um, true, but you'd be surprised. I mean, you could, the, the upside doing the Zoom kind of stuff is your audience is kind of limitless. If you can market it right and find the right people that want to see what it is that you're offering and yeah. And if you have some uh, experience, I, I have a lot of experience in the event industry. So there's organizations called Meeting Professionals International. Are you familiar with them? I am not. Yeah. MPI, it's Meeting Professionals International. They're all corporate meeting planners, not just corporate, but people that plan meetings. So they're the ones that say yes or no, if they're going to hire you. And it's an international organization with chapters. And I'm sure there's a chapter in Dallas or Texas somewhere. Yeah. And I'll have to look into that. I, I didn't even know that was a thing. Just, just go on to uh, LinkedIn and type in CMP. That's the certification for meeting for a certified meeting professional. And you'll find a bunch of them. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'll definitely do the other day then. They're, they're very jaded though. You know, you got to become their friend. They're going to go, oh God, another magician. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, another one. And there's another organization called the International Special Events Association. Mm -hmm. or, or it's now called uh, International <laughs> Live Events Association. It used to be called International Special Events Society, which is ISIS. So they changed their name. I don't blame <laughs> them. <laughs> to, to ILEA. 
<laughs> and that's another one that, uh, so it's very possible that, uh, you know, and Jay Scott probably knows a lot of these type people too. You know, it depends on where you want to work. You want to work corporate gigs or you want to work, uh, you know, theater or you want, there's theater circuits and stuff. So, yeah. And that's, uh, that's part of what I hope to do with these shows is talk with people and see if I can help quantum leap over any barriers they might have as far as marketing of stuff. And because it's very possible that a person can start doing this entertainment full time. I think magic is, that's another thing. It's all ages, you know? Oh yeah. Eight, eight to 80. <laughs> so there's no one who doesn't enjoy a good magician. Yeah. Wonderful. Even someone who doesn't like magic, if they see a good magician, they're going to enjoy it. Well, I've had a situation like that where you're sitting at a table and someone says, I oh, know we don't want any magic. And then you go to the table next to them and all of a sudden everybody's enjoying it. And then they go, Hey, could you come back over here? <laughs> they're peeking over to the next table to watch. Exactly. And now they're now booked. Cause, cause just like everything there's, there's good and bad, you know, and it's uh, the Pareto principle of the 2080 principle or the 80, 20 principle, whatever you deem it is there's a bunch of bad people out there that give it a tarnished name. There's bad mm -hmm. doctors, there's bad lawyers, there's bad musicians, there's bad magicians. So you got to kind of get a, into that 20% or with magicians is probably like 2%. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh yeah. With every uncle doing, doing a card trick, thinks himself as a magician, you know, <laughs> I see you spinning the wand over there. Are you, are you do the, a lot of the floor sheet kind of stuff? Oh yeah. Like I use a wand in pretty much all of my acts. A wand is just, it's a good distraction piece. Yeah. And I know a lot of the it's buskers the, use yeah. them to bang on the cups and stuff to, to get a crowd. Good thing. Uh, I've never done anything like that. Not busking anyway. But I've I tried it. Working. It's hard. It's hard work. It's uh, you got to have thick skin. <laughs> oh, yeah. I imagine a lot of people walk by. A lot of people walk by well, and hecklers. And I had a, I had a gig. I think two weeks ago in front of a popcorn store here downtown, uh, I couldn't get a single person to stop all day. I can believe it. That's just, sometimes people are busy. And uh, that's what, I, I lived in Asheville, North Carolina, and I used to do a little bit of street stuff mm -hmm. there because it's a touristy mm -hmm. kind of city. Yeah. I, I'm doing it, I make myself 10, 20 bucks, and I go, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna go get a hamburger with my money. <laughs> that's it. I just, I, I'm not cut out for that. I'm more, uh, more stand-up comedy or else close-up, close-up mm -hmm. parlor. I do the walk around table to table stuff, but I'm, I'm not real. I don't enjoy that that much because you're every, you know, breaking the ice at every table, interrupting people. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, I'm glad you're enjoying your food. Now pay attention to me. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I used to do a bunch of stand-up comedy back in the day too. So. Oh, did you? Oh yeah, I used to oh. every Wednesday night I would go down to Hyenas in Dallas and what about the funny bone? Four in the morning when they would let me do stuff. The funny bone is still down there. The funny bone? Yeah. Uh, I'm unfamiliar with that one. The one I used to go to was uh, called the Hyena Club. Okay. Yeah, there's a friend of mine, Dan Fleshman. Do you know Dan? I do not. He works uh, right now. He works in Colorado, up in a mountain somewhere, Vail, and all that stuff. Doing like three restaurants every week. Oh yeah. And uh, he used to be in Dallas and he was helping the funny bone. And then he moved up to Minneapolis and started a funny bone comedy club there. And I was part owner of it. It was a lot of fun. Oh yeah. I bet. I like the comedy clubs. Absolutely. I do too. Comedy clubs are just, I don't know. Open mic nights bother me. I always got pushed to the last person. Cause I wasn't, I wasn't friends with the people who owned it and That's everyone. Right. Else was so I was like the last, no one was there anymore by the time I went up. It is a good old boy network. I was out in LA once trying to get on the comedy store and I did get there, but they said, you got to get there early. And I got there about four in the afternoon and you, you're waiting. And then all of a sudden the shows start at like seven ish. And then you wait and wait and wait and wait. And they, they bump you, they bump you, they bump you. I didn't get out of there till three in the morning. Right. right. It's the worst. And there's no one in there at three in the morning anymore. Well, there was one guy and he didn't like me and he was my front row dude and it was a, that was the longest three minutes of my life at the comedy store by myself i'm telling you <laughs> 20 minutes can feel like a year you know another topic that i'd like to bring into these shows as they progress is uh unique experiences that happen that were like didn't expect that to happen you know certain you know stories I'm yeah when you have a few of those little situations uh you will 
<laughs> I'm sure I will. I'm sorry. I'm sure I have some, but none's come to mind at the moment. Um, uh, so I do have a day job right now, obviously, because everything going on and whatnot. I'm not a full-time magician yet. Uh, I work for a government indexing. Uh, we index government videos, basically, for their meetings. And uh, my boss there, I taught him a very simple double lift trick. Okay. And he had his son in there the other day. And the way he was doing it, and this was a lot of fun for me just to watch. Because me watching, I know what's going on. His son watching has no idea. Uh, so he does a double lift to uh, bring up the wrong car. He says, now I put this card over and it's not that card. You have to do so-and-so chores. And so he says, well, it's not that card. He's, you know, eight or nine. And he flips over the card and just, oh. So now he's got to do all the chores in the house. And that was a lot of fun for me to watch. Oh, tricking his son. That's kind of abusive. <laughs> <laughs> but don't use those terms like double lift. You have to code that a little bit like Penn and Teller do. So because if the regular audience sees it, that, that's a topic that I'm going to talk about. We can maybe talk about it now if you want it, is the exposure of magic. Yeah, what sure. Is, what are your thoughts on that? Um, my thoughts may differ from most. Uh, well, I don't think we should necessarily teach everyone you know, what's going on, what's happening. Maybe a select group of friends that you have around you can teach a few things too. Mm -hmm. Because in my opinion, me knowing how all this is done and all my friends not knowing how any of this is done, that's a little boring to me and they don't know what to watch for when I'm having them actually watch a trick. They don't know that I want them to make sure I'm not doing something wrong. But if or they know how the trick is supposedly done, you know, my four or five friends that I have I find it easier to practice in front of them because they can tell me if I have in fact messed up. So there's sort of maybe your almost apprentices or uh, part of your, your team to help you through stuff. I'd say more of a team. Less of, they're, they're not interested in actually performing it at all, mm -hmm. but after I show them a time or two, then I'll show them how it's done and then I'll show them a time or two again so they can watch for the trick. That's interesting. Tell me That's whether or not I messed it up. That's sort of a gray area with something like that in my, because my take on it is you shouldn't expose this stuff because it deflates them. It takes the magic out of the magic and mm -hmm. the people that are exposing it, they should do it in closed rooms in private. They shouldn't be doing it on TikTok and YouTube and just letting it out everywhere. And oh, I not, completely agree with that. And, and it's, it's not so much that uh, people should not have a place to learn because you can, you can figure out how to unlock the door. Either you pay for it or you be a member or, but if you, or you go to the magic store, you find a mentor like Jay Scott or something. But just mm -hmm. putting it out there, it isn't so much that that's the bad part. The bad part is the person, the lay audience that doesn't want to know how it works and they stumble on it by accident. It's kind of like a little kid walking in on your dad and he's getting dressed in a Santa suit. Yeah, it ruins the whole experience. Exactly. Or it's like giving someone a gift without wrapping it. <laughs> yeah, it's, or, just no, it's no fun anymore. Or telling a joke, but telling the punchline first. Ooh, that'd be, that would be trippy. Yeah. So I think that the, the magic should not be exposed for that reason. If they're going to be teaching stuff, most people that are doing it, they're doing it just to get clicks and views and stuff to mm -hmm. make money with their YouTube channel or whatever. And then it's a, a liaison into you know, teaching a class and charging for it. But I think they should not be exposing it. Publicly. Oh yeah, I completely agree. Uh, I, I do have TikTok. I, I pretty much, what I'll do sometimes put videos from my actual stage show on that. But there's a lot of videos on TikTok that I get recommended uh, from this one kid, I'm not going to name any names, uh, who shows you how to do tricks on TikTok. And that has always bothered me a whole lot. Well, there's a lot of them. There's those two Asian kids where some guy does it and the other guy grabs it out of his hands and exposes it. That's I know exactly kid. who you're talking about. Yeah. I don't like that. It's, it's bullying is what it is. The guy's trying to magically entertain and some other knucklehead grabs it and exposes it. It's cruel. Yeah. So I think it's wrong. Um, there's people who Jay Sankey, I think he even teaches some stuff. Some people will try and defend it, say, well, Penn and Teller did it. I think that was wrong. I think it was wrong. Mm -hmm. they, the masked magician exposing it. Um, I know why they did it because it's good press. You know, it gets attention. But I think it uh, takes the magic out of the magic. It's not fair to the audience. Yeah, I'll completely agree with that. But in your situation, like I, said, I only have about five friends who I show anything to. Yeah, that's an, an interesting thing that maybe what you do is because because magicians look at things a lot differently than a layperson that don't, might not see it. So if mm -hmm. you have a team and say this is my team, maybe you swear them to secrecy, 
All right, they're not allowed to tell anyone how any of this is done. We're going to keep this a tight little circle. And then I want your opinion from a lay audience, unknowing of the magic secrets. What do you think of this? And then you could show them the secret and say, can you still see that kind of thing? And then yeah, that's about how it. I run. Yeah. And if there's like in the little click in the, the sworn to secrecy thing where they're not going, yeah, you should see that thing that he does with that. It ruins it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know. That's all my own. I'm 63. So I'm from the old school where you don't learn anything. You walk into the magic store, you buy something, but you don't see how it works until you paid for it. And then you get to befriend people. And then they'll eventually show you a few things and you start learning and you work your way up. You don't just, well, I got a hundred thousand dollars. I think I'll buy an Ezra illusion. <laughs> I bought an illusion show and I got to figure out how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, it's mostly my girlfriend who I'll have do that with. Yep. Sometimes her daughter will be around. But they're, they're going to figure it out anyway with the amount they want to practice. That's right. But that's still not the excuse to do it. Um, yeah. My best friend, um, his wife, he, she doesn't want to know and he doesn't teach her anything. Same with mine, my wife. She doesn't want to know. So, but if you're using somebody that, uh, that – maybe they don't do magic and you say, Hey, could you look at this and see if you see anything? And then they see you did the move and you say, okay, yeah, that's how I did it. Now let me do it again. Did you see it that time? Okay. No, I didn't. Okay, good. Maybe so they can help you that way. As long as they keep it tight, but if all of a sudden they go, yeah, I was with my boyfriend is out at the restaurant and he did this thing with this card thing and here's how it works. And then you buy ads on Facebook and expose it to a bunch of people to get likes on your page and, <laughs> yeah, that takes that takes the fun out of it for me when everyone knows how it's done. I want to be the guy who it's, there's a slight rush knowing how it's done versus not knowing how it's done. You know well, what I mean? I've seen situations where people have their phone with them and they're in the audience and they see, okay, silk and ball trick. Oh, that. Oh, yeah, that's what he's doing it. <laughs> oh, that would bother me if I saw someone doing that. I'd be I'd be angry. That exactly. would upset me immediately. It's just it's just, but it's available on the internet. And that's part of the problem is it's open forum. Mm -hmm. Anyways, yeah, that, that's, that's some of the topics that I'd like to talk about. I don't want to dwell on the expose of magic, but uh, that's what this show is about is uh, getting to know each other. And maybe uh, if someone's got a convention or something coming up, uh, like you, you mentioned that theater, if there's mm -hmm. a possibility of coming down there and doing a show or maybe doing it uh, remote or doing a talk show. Who knows what might happen? I've got a play up here. We do a Sunday night magic mm -hmm. close now. It's dark because of pandemic, but, and then Eagle magic stores like the oldest magic store in the country. It's yeah. Still, still physical brick and mortar running. Nice. Well over a hundred and some years old. And um, then uh, the magic lounge, I used to do these on the boat, the river boat in Mississippi. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then uh, another place we got here is the underground. And then I have this concept of creating a festival, kind of like what uh, J. Scott Berry did with the uh, Weekend of Wonder in Asheville. Yeah. I worked with him on that. I was one of the strolling performers. Oh, that's really cool. And um, I, I'd like to create some kind of festival slash convention for magicians. So a small percentage of it would be magicians and a bigger percentage would be just magic enthusiasts and have people at theaters and on the street and at restaurants and in bars and at doing shows and all over the place in the city for a whole week. I'd like to see it go for a whole oh, week. I bet that would take off easy. People, especially right now, magic's getting bigger than it ever has been. Well, that's why I'm planting the seed in this video so that if the right words come out and someone says, hey, I'll help you with that and then be able to create that. So it can start here in Minnesota, then become the Midwest and maybe it could be a you know, national magic day that major cities end up having magic that would be amazing it'd be fun get it sponsored by macy's macy's is big with the magic thing you know? are they I, did, I actually didn't know that macy's magic they got a big magic star look on their website you'll probably find something magical i'll check out macy's later then. <laughs> i don't i don't you go on macy's very often believe it or not <laughs> you never know well i don't like to do these too long because it consumes too much time and we've only got 24 hours in a day every day True. So. Austin, I appreciate you taking the time. If you want to stay on, we'll have another little chat, but I'm going to close this one off and we can uh, 
we can talk a little later. Is there anything else you want to share with us as far as how do we get a hold of you if someone's down in the Dallas area? I know that Dallas has a big MPI chapter. How close yeah. are they to Dallas? Uh, how close am I to Dallas? Yeah. Uh, 45 minutes to an hour. So I literally just go down Highway 75 south, or sorry, north uh, for 45 minutes and you'll be right where I am. <laughs> okay, so how do they find you in case one of these event planners or somebody is interested in connecting? I have a Facebook page. Uh, my website's down at the moment. I'm working on getting that back up. But if the Facebook page, just Austin Moody Magic, has all my contact info. It has some videos on it. It has you know, lots of advertising pictures. You can see whenever I'm performing at the Rialto, which throughout 2021, they're going to book me a lot is what they're telling me right now. Good. Uh, in fact, I'll be signing some kind of contract with them for too long. So just keep an eye on the Facebook page, and that's where you can find out wherever I'm doing. Okay, so it's Austin Moody, M-O-O-D-Y. Well, Austin, I appreciate you taking the time again. This is a lot of fun, and I'm enjoying it. Um, kind of venting a little bit with my problem with the exposure stuff. <laughs> no <laughs> problem. I had it. a great time. Up. Okay, stick around, and we'll, have, we'll chat a little bit. Thank you very much. Okay, that's it. A little round of applause for Austin and me. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>